Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the farm. Today we are, we're doing a big project. We have been working on fencing and infrastructure on the farm. We've got fencing all the way there, all the way out and around. And we've changed up our fencing a little bit. We've got um, just T-posts going through here. But over there we went T-post, four inch round wood post, T-post, four inch round wood post. I just cleared this area with the tractor so that we can roll some fence down here and hook it to the tractor and then pull it. So we're gonna pull some, uh, we're gonna pull some flexi fence tight. If you guys have watched the channel for quite a bit, you know that I hate field fencing. And then I said, and the last property that I would never use it again, but then we got a tractor and I thought, you know what, if the tractor can't pull it tight and it doesn't work this time around, I will never buy field fencing again, ever. We've been in here scraping. It's been really hot, so I don't want to come in here with the brush hog, the brush cutter, and be in here cutting. Uh, just you know, just fire danger. Trying to make sure we don't we don't spark anything up. Um, I went through with the box scraper and scraped everything next to the fence, and it got out a lot of the junk that's going to be in our way. Callie's up here raking what's left. We did have a stump in the way. Um, that stump right there, and it's in too good for me to be able to get out with the with the tractor. So as you can see, I notched, cut a notch in it right on the fence line. So the fencing will actually uh, sit right down in that. But that is, that's just the way it goes. I don't have the equipment to be able to pull out that specific stump. So it stays forever. Oh, so the field fencing that we are putting up is going to be the, uh, it's a, uh, I think it's two by two or four by four squares, but it's sheep fencing. Oh, well, this stuff is just, uh, you know, your, your cheaper run of the mill field fencing this is why i do not like this stuff is when you when you pull it when you stretch it um even when you stretch it tight seemingly uh, the animals can push on it and bend it and i believe it's because it's from inferior metal um, they use garbage metal in these things and then it's just it, it gets weakened and stretches it's not great it's a pretty good looking fence line so you can see all this lush grass it's still growing in this part of the property where the, where the cows are not and the cows cannot get to. Uh, they're gonna be able to get to it here pretty soon, but we are about to turn them loose. So we need to be able to stretch the fence on this line, and then we need to finish a little bit of barbed wire fencing across the front, and then we have got ourselves a pasture. This whole area, this pasture all looked like this stuff everywhere, and you can kind of see it, you can kind of see it out there. But that stuff was everywhere. You couldn't see ground at all between uh, us using the tractor and the cows running all over it. It's really beat this stuff down. And grass is what's wanting to grow up underneath all of this. So it's really cool. This right here is a good example of what this entire area looked like. Now this property is pretty flat, which is really cool. Uh, you've got a lot of just dead logs. A lot of dead logs, old, old, old dead logs that are in the ground, on the ground. So a lot of what we're gonna be doing is beating that stuff up. We don't wanna necessarily remove it and get it out of the property because we're, if we're beating it up, we're adding biomass to the field, which is great, that's what we want. Um, the cows have been all through here because we've moved the panels around. So the cows have come in, grazed it, pooped, and then left, which is fantastic. Um, it's a very small area to be rotational grazing, but we are doing it, which is pretty cool. And you've got these random tufts of grass that have um, managed to escape the cow. There's actually a crick bed running through all there. And on a, another video, we'll go through that crick bed and we will uh, we'll clear it. But uh, water does run through there. So we will be able to um, have water in with the cows uh, during specific times of the year. Not this year because it's like the surface of Mars out here. But you can just see, you know, it's your typical... It's your typical forest, a couple of monster trees here and there. Um, but this is like the big issue here. There are lots of down trees and just stuff in the way. Lots of overgrowth, lots of um, dead decaying trees on the ground. So I think it's going to be good, healthy pasture one day. I just think it's going to take us some time to get there. There's a snake skin right there, Kelly. Ooh. The cows are getting ready to have this big area. Right now they've got a big bale that they have spread out. Another one that they're making a nest in. And one of the things that I am doing, because a lot of this land um, has some dry spots in it, some just real 
kind of sandy dead areas. Uh, this is all oat grass, so there's tons of oat seed in this stuff. So uh, I'm putting it down in like the dead areas, letting the cows eat it. They're moving it around, they're spreading seed around. Uh, the undigested seed that they don't use up, they poop out. So they are seeding this area as well. So I'm hoping we'll get a little bit of rain soon. And that'll help to just kind of seed these, these, these sparse areas, get some seed into the ground, and then future grass will grow up. We're actually out here working right at noon. Every other day that we've been doing it, you're just covered in sweat and dying because it's been like 95 degrees. Uh, today's an overcasty day, which is fantastic. Kinley's trimming all the little stuff that's going to be in the way. Our fence is strung, it is up, we are ready to go. It is actually the following day. We got our fence up, got it strung. We were a little short, so we had to feed all of it back about two feet. Did the big accordion thing, it was pretty funny. Uh, got it, got about six inches shy, so we had to do it all again. Shelby's like, this is a total waste of time. Uh, but our fence is up, it's just leaning up. It is completely nailed off and attached. Uh, on the corner post on the other end so we are ready to attach it to the tractor pull it stretch this thing tight and then attach it um, i will tell you that there is an implement um, for this that you can actually put an entire spool of field fencing on it it has a brake system on it so you can use it on your tractor to spread the whole fence out put the brake on it and then pull it tight with the tractor and then attach it all the issue is, is I couldn't get one. Um, they, they just weren't available with all of the shortages of everything that's taking place. I cannot get one of the implements um, in my area. So I'll tell you guys what, if you're going to be doing this stuff, I will put a link in the description below for the implement that I'm talking about. I've talked to people about this before and they had no idea that there's this implement for uh, for field fencing and it makes it so much easier than just rolling this stuff out in the mess that we did which is fine because I wouldn't have got my tractor through here unless I took out a bunch of trees um, so we rolled it by hand but now we're gonna attach it to the tractor um, and mostly mostly just kind of a redneck way plan plan one in my head here's how it works will it work I don't know okay so here is my idea we are going to take a two by four and put it down. I already need a longer two by four. I can see that now. Okay, so I need a longer two by four. I need to be able to hook into the bottom and hook into the top with uh, crane straps. I've got some toe straps here. We're going to be using these. Hook one into the top, hook one into the bottom, hook the loop to the tractor and then pull the whole thing. Now this should ideally tighten our fencing, but it's also going to want to unroll the fencing. So I have to come up with a way to lock the fencing to the board to act as a brake as we pull it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Some kind of a clamp, maybe just running a stick through the fencing to where it can't physically turn anymore. That'll probably work. But eventually we're gonna pull this thing. And then what we need to do is go all the way to the end. I'm gonna have Shelby kind of running up and down the fence line to make sure that I am not getting stuck on any of the T posts with my fencing. And then at the very end is a corner just like this. I've got this and then, an, and then another section going left. So it, you know, it's making kind of a right angle. It's a little off, but it's making like a right angle basically. This post down there is leaning out of plum. So what we need to do is when we're pulling the fence, Shelby's kind of got to watch it and make sure that we don't go too far, but it basically should pull it right back into plum for us. Um, and that is when our fence is going to be good and tight. 
doing it. So we put forethought into putting in our corners down at the end. If we had put it straight up and down and we use the tractor to pull on it, we would now be pulling in our fence corner like that. So something to think about beforehand uh, when you guys are getting started uh, on this process. All right, so I'm gonna head back and go find a longer two by four, but I'm in my head this works, so we might get lucky. Uh, this might work out, we'll see. Okay, so I just came up with a really great idea. All right, I think this one's gonna work. Shelby helped me with it. Is it, gonna, is it trying to fall? No. Okay. I I think it's nice and tight. Okay. okay. This is the ticket. So I, looking down, I could see it just wanting to pull tight. Yeah. So what we need to do now is we need to go, now that it's pretty taut, we need to go down the fence line and just take and put it next to the fence. Okay. So you can see here there's like little, just a little bush or whatever. Yeah. We don't want that to be rock solid tight against that because then we're going to be fighting it. Okay. So now's our time to get it lined out, get any little snags out of it. All right, let's go walk the fence line. It already looks so much tighter than any fence we've ever done. <laughs> and then, yeah, I think we've got it connected on some of the fence posts, so we got to get those unhooked before oh. we bend them. Should I do that now, then? Yeah, just unhook it on the way up, and then, and then uh -oh. this one, yeah. Is that the one that you bent? No, here. Good as new. And then on this one, you're gonna have to come through and make sure that the fence goes right into my cool little stump notch that I made. Okay. Ow, Ooh, oh gosh, damn. Ow. Are you okay? Oh, that hurts so bad. Don't let me, here, let me get them unstuck. Miss your hand. Oh, I'll get you right there. <sighs> yeah. Sorry, babe. All right, it's definitely getting tighter, but I can see that I'm I'm really sucking down on that spool of wire. There's not much wire left, and I probably won't use it anywhere. But I'm I'm basically you know giving it the death grip. But I can see Shelby walking down the line, and I can see how loose the fence is still. So we still got quite a ways to really suck this dude down but we're starting to put a lot of pressure on a lot of tension on
All right, we got it tight. So the tractor is in park, holding the tension. We got it too tight. We pulled it too far. Shelby started to hear popping on the other end. Wasn't sure what it was, so she stopped me, but she was watching the fence and not the corner post on the other end. And the corner post started to, um, it is now past plumb.